I think it'd be fair to say that words on paper or words on a website um, aren't sufficient. It's the actions that go behind them. And so it is important that clear and comprehensive policies and procedures are developed, absolutely. And to make sure that LGBTQ members of the school community are safe and included. In my time as a school leader, it's one of those rare um, movements where I, I think the adults in schools are really taking their cues from kids. I, I think that kids understand the importance of this um, and they want to ensure that their schools and everyone within their sco school community feels included. I was looking into clubs and I realized that there wasn't a GSA in the school. And I went to the office and asked, hey, um, I noticed that there wasn't a GSA on the club sheet and I was wondering what that was about. And they were like, oh, well, there was a GSA, but it kind of died down because nobody was really passionate about it and everybody just kind of stopped coming to it. And so I was like, well, that can't happen. Some people really need a GSA in the school. So I found a teacher and I found a room that we could go in, a day that was good for most people. and. I started the GSA. Our GSA club was very um, proactive. They went to the principal and they asked, could we fly the pride flag that we purchased on the International Homophobia Day? They've had a meeting and now they're talking about where to hang the flag in our school. And so they're gonna make a proposal to the principal and see where we can uh, keep that up all the time. You know, a GSA or anything of that sort, it doesn't have to be a big extravaganza. I think it's important for teachers to know it's not, you know, it's not going to be a heavy workload. I definitely don't think that a teacher has to be uh, LGBTQ or identify any way like that in order to be a good sponsor for a GSA because it's really about having compassion for other people and making a place safe for other people and anyone can do that. We really appreciate that. School leads, or safe contacts, as we call them in Vancouver School Board, and GSA sponsors are, they're the folks at the schools who take the resources that I send out or the resources they find from SOGI123 or different websites, and they share them with their colleagues. They lead professional development at the school. They invite speakers and present information and films. They also uh, are there to organize awareness days like Pink Day and International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia and Trans Day of uh, Resilience and Remembrance, key days for, to raise awareness and for students to come together with staff to um, celebrate or to remember. The advice I would give for teachers considering becoming a SOGI school lead is that they themselves do not need to ask whether or not they hold up a membership card to any particular group. There is no such thing. The first question I have from so many teachers who wish to be a part of this is, what do I need to know? And the answer is, you just have to be ready to listen. You have to be a part of the discussion and the dialogue. I am no expert, and my students remind me of this every day. One of the things I'm really proud of with our uh, SOGI leads is that they're not all teachers. We have principals, vice principals, who wanted to be the SOGI leads for their schools. We have uh, our support staff. We have a custodian in one of our buildings who's a SOGI lead. Some of our SEAs, youth care workers. We do have a lot of teachers, but we want champions. For teachers not to feel quite so nervous, it's also important for them to feel supported. And so this year, we've started the BC SOGI Educator Network. It's an opportunity for teachers to share resources and to share strategies with others that, uh, that are doing this work across the province. The SOGI Educator Network has been uh, invaluable to me and all of my colleagues. We come together as a group of school districts and it's really awesome for us to be able to collaborate and share ideas. The Educator Network has kept us on track and helped us to create goals and follow through with them. I am the SOGI District Coordinator for Vancouver School Board. What that entails is uh, professional development uh, across the district for staff and classroom workshops. I provide school consultations for staff on best practice for inclusion of all students. I also support the work of GSAs and help provide resources and information for awareness days. At UBC we've always valued social justice. It's a very important component in all of the work that we do here. And we wanted to, with Teacher Education for All, become really conscious of and purposeful in how we create inclusive environments. I can't imagine that it hasn't had uh, impact or will have impact 
upon their pedagogy, their development of curriculum in classrooms. So I would suggest it's been a tremendous success. The BCPUPA can take a leadership role in terms of professional learning and development in this area. We use webinars to sort of uh, provide tools in the toolkit for our school leaders to ensure that they are knowledgeable in these areas. SOGI education is important to the BCSTA because at the heart of everything we do is ensuring equitable access to education for all students. So ensuring that our LGBTQ students feel safe and included in the school environment helps improve their student achievement and also helps improve all other student achievement. And so if people are struggling with where and how to start, they can access the SOGI Education Network, they can talk to other trustees across the province who are doing the work and ask them how they started and the best way that they find to support the work in their districts. SOGI Inclusive Education is important to the BCSSA, not only because there's an expectation under the Human Rights Code and uh, under the new policy by the Ministry of Education. I think there's a, um, a moral responsibility in regard to making sure that all students in our school environment have a safe and welcoming environment in which to learn. We like things to be very simple and clear and concise and so we went to our own council and said we'd like to put together a SOGI policy. Here's some things we like, here's some things we don't like in these policies and you know we don't want it to be more than four pages because we want it actually people to know and understand the policy. I think inclusive education, including SOGI issues, is important for education. It's a really good reflection of who our students are today. As parent organizations, we have to be really aware that we represent parents from varying backgrounds, from very diverse cultures, explaining to our parents what's happening and why it's happening, explaining about the BC Human Rights Code and how it's changed is really important. So I've been able to see firsthand the sort of things that students are currently facing in schools around the province and the challenges that our members have in doing this important work and the important role that the Ministry of Education plays in terms of coordinating with schools and school districts to fulfill their responsibilities under the BC Human Rights Code. And so the BCTF is uh, is proud to have done a lot of work in this area over the past couple decades and we're very pleased to be partnering with the Ministry of Education and the Art Foundation uh, currently. Curry Centre Society has done some research in this area uh, and has shown that there are benefits that apply to all students. You're exposing students to diversity and allows them to learn from each other's differences. It allows them to develop empathy and compassion. I think at the end of the day, we want to ask ourselves, what type of students are we hoping we have graduate? I think when we don't give them the opportunity to be exposed to differences uh, when they're out in the world, uh, they won't have the ability to really relate. That's where I think the benefit really lies. We don't know where we're going to go next, but we're going to keep on this journey because we know there is much more work yet to be done in our schools, so we're going to do that. We're committed. The BC SOGI Educator Network is open to any school in BC. If they'd like to get involved, they can connect through SOGI123 uh, or the SOGIEducation.org website. To all the educators and staff uh, watching this video, uh, I would suggest you take note of where you're at right now because people are in different uh, stages in terms of SOGI education and make an action plan decide what it is, what are the next steps that you're going to take. And I'd suggest one of the first steps would be to visit the SOGIEducation.org website where you're going to find the resources to help you on your journey.